The Innovator Founder Visa will replace the Innovator Visa from early April and the changes will be implemented on different dates starting from the 12th of April of this year. So the new route removes the 50,000 minimum funds requirement and you can also now have secondary employment provided that it's for skilled work. Now, the startup visa is also being closed to new applications. And what the government said is that with the removal of the 50K minimum funds requirement for innovative founders, it's now no longer necessary to uh, maintain a separate route for, st for startup entrepreneurs that don't have these funds. So the startup visa is going. So what I'm going to do in this video is just go through in detail um, some particularly interesting uh, provisions and so what you know, just to allow you to know what's changed but also what hasn't changed. So to start with, the qualifying period, so this is key. So the qualifying period requirement for settlement by an innovator founder is still three years and for a partner it's still uh, five years and I've talked in previous videos about uh, your children and the points that they could qualify for in indefinite leave to remain depending on the circumstances but all that has, has not changed and that's kind of the key point this remains an incentivized visa in other words the uh, the government wants tech entrepreneurs to come to the UK and is saying that you can qualify after just three years rather than five years as you would on a, on a work visa let's say now also start again starting again what hasn't changed the success criteria for indefinite leave to remain um, re they're effectively unchanged and I've got five uh, of my clients through now on uh, settlement uh, for the settlement stage where I've acted for them uh, from the beginning on their innovative visas and they've now gone through to get indefinitely to remain. So I've produced a bunch of stuff on this but um, effectively those criteria are unchanged so everything that I've said previously about this uh, remains true when it comes to um, settling on an innovative visa. The next point is that a legacy endorsing body, let's just have a look at what that idea is, but a legacy endorsing body cannot endorse you for settlement if you were first endorsed by one of the new endorsing bodies. So basically what's going on here is there's going to be two kinds of endorsing bodies um, going forward. You're going to have the new endorsing bodies and they may include ones among the current cohorts and you're going to have the old endorsing bodies the legacy endorsing bodies the legacy endorsing bodies will still be able to endorse their own cohort for indefinitely to remain um, what you can't do however is start with one of the new endorsing bodies and then get endorsed for settlement by one of the legacy endorsing bodies so they are effectively you know, siloed going forward now, to just take the next point, you, um, you can uh, take up uh, skilled work, but you can't, for example, just hire yourself out or uh, go through an employment um, agency, for example. And I've produced a passage here. I'm going to produce a separate video outlining exactly what roles you can take on. This is super important, I think, because um, it's been very restrictive under the innovative visa. You, you weren't able to uh, take up employment. Um, now you can, and some of my clients particularly in connection with uh, financial technology, but also um, with other digital products, um, they do have a sort of mix of activities. So that, that will be uh, great. And it's good that restriction has been lifted. Um, now the investment requirements, as I say, has been removed, but the financial requirements remains. Really surprising how many people get in trouble with the financial requirements. You only need to show 1,270 plus the extra amounts if you're bringing your family um, but it's got to be for 28 days and you've got to follow the documentary requirements yeah this is black and white if you don't if you if you don't meet that that requirement if it dips even for a day then your uh, visa would be refused um just to take the next point yeah you need to show significant progress under your business plan and this is really it's unchanged but this is what it's all going to be uh, uh, about now um, and continue to be about what progress have you made judged against the business plan that you originally put forward. And if you said anything super optimistic in that original uh, business plan, then that could come back to haunt you. So I've got to be really careful about what goes in the initial business plan. Now, the next one is the contact points. So they've formalized the idea of the contact points, which, which previously was only in the guidance, uh, but they've gone very heavy on this. Now, contact points are mandatory and uh, need to be at regular intervals. So 
the idea of intervals is you can't just have the contact points at the very end. You want to have, if you're just having uh, a minimal number of contact points, um, they say at least two contact point meetings, you know, one would have to be at the beginning of the um, visa term and one at the end. One would expect to be more regularly than that, but they must be regular. So you could have the contact points, the minimum number of contact points, but still be refused indefinitely to remain or an extension to your visa if they haven't been at regular intervals. Um, now, the, the next point, let's just have a look again on the investment uh, requirement. It's removed, but now it's all about budgeting instead. So the fact that the 50K re requirement has gone shouldn't kind of lull you into some idea that this is now super easy to get or it's like the start of visa. No, I've seen this happen before in other visa routes. They're removing the, uh, the requirements, right? But they're replacing it effectively with this uh, great level of discretion in assessing whether this is actually affordable for you. What is it exactly that you want to do? And is it affordable? Do you have the capital requirements for it and potentially the ongoing requirements, ongoing sort of uh, cash requirements to uh, run your business? So, uh, so that's a super important point. I'd say that's the main point, in fact, and the main change is that in your business plan, you will have to do a lot on costing and budgeting over the full period, not just the cash flow analysis um, and not just profit and loss projected, but also full budgeting and working out where the money's coming from. And that connects with the next point, which is this is now all about due diligence, um, which it hasn't necessarily been uh, at least from the government's perspective, uh, previously under the Innovator route. So under the Innovator Founder route, uh, you can see here, it says that the, in, the endorsement letter has got to confirm that the applicant is considered a fit and proper person to receive endorsement. And the endorsing body has, quote, no concerns over the legitimacy of source of funds or modes of transfer of funds invested by the applicant into their endorsed business. So bear in mind here, Russian sanctions, for example, or you know, uh, capital controls in China. Let's read on. The endorsing uh, body has identified no reason to believe that the applicant or their endorsed business may be the beneficiary of illicit or otherwise unsatisfactorily explained wealth. So let me give you uh, one important point here. Tax. If the overseas business has not paid tax or has paid less tax than it ought to have paid, this is relevant to, to, to this consideration here. Um, so the endorsing body has got to be completely satisfied. That is definitely going to involve a more, more encompassing due diligence exercise. And, you know, the, the Home Office is, is going to apply its own checks as well. So you'd have the due, due diligence and effectively AML checks, but also the fit and proper person test really goes beyond even that. So you have that level of check, and then you'll have the uh, similar checks or follow-up checks conducted by the Home Office. And from the endorsing body's perspective, they've got to make sure that they don't miss up because it's on them if they've stated in the endorsement letter that you know, you're a fit and proper person. And it turns out on the Home Office's checks that you're not, for whatever reason. And then genuineness. The applicant must be a genuine innovator founder applicant. And this is where they actually have broader discretion. Now, fine, you don't need to have the 50K funds, but they have a broader discretion to say yes or no at the Home Office stage. Now, remember, I said in one of my recent videos that there was a, a refusal rate of around 44% in one of the recent quarters. So these are people who have been endorsed, but then refused at the Home Office stage. They've been endorsed for the Innovator Visa and yet refused the Innovator Visa because Although the endorsing body said yes, the Home Office said no. Then termination of the visa, going on this theme of the, you know, the uh, Home Office having it, taking its own view. Entry clearance may be cancelled or permission cancelled where a holder fails to undergo a contact point with the endorsing body. So previously it was based on a, a, you know, the endorsing body reporting. Now there's a, 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 a stricter uh, a approach. <coughs> Then just back to that point on due diligence and the Home Office making their own checks. Look, if the entry clearance or permission may be canceled if the decision maker has reason to believe that the applicant is or has been the subject of serious civil or criminal actions, so not just criminal matters, but they've been uh, sued um, in connection 
uh, say financial crime or, or misconduct or disbarred from acting as a director or disbarred from uh, carrying out regulated financial activities in any country. So they'll be doing those kind of checks. Um, and again, just to finish off, this idea of legacy endorsing bodies. So let's look at the definition. It says it means an organization which had previously been approved by the Home Office to endorse an individual, um, but is not permitted to endorse a new individual or business under the innovator founder route. So you're gonna have, the, gonna have effectively two classes of endorsing body. So I hope that's a helpful, helpful review um, of the main changes so you know what's changed, what hasn't changed under the innovator route. In the next video, I'm going to also look at the global talent visa, some important changes on that as well that you ought to know about. See you soon. Bye for now. We now know who the new... Hi guys, my clients in a... To get indefinite leave to remain under the Innovator Founder Visa. <coughs> we now know who the new endorsing bodies are going to be for the Innovator Founder Visa. So that's the new visa that's replacing the Innovator Visa. And you remember a tender document that's published on the government's site. We can have a look at the first page here. And I want to highlight some passages in particular. So it starts with the general description. The Home Office... Well, this is the second part of the video. And the reason why we're bringing this one up is about the endorsing bodies. So what we have listened to is overview, what have changed, all of that. But please, we should need to take, we need to take note of this part. And the endorsing body. After this one, the person who are going through the visa will be come up and to talk to us. Hope we are enjoying it. Thank you. This is seeking to improve immigration arrangements for entrepreneurial talent from overseas, including further reform of existing visa routes. The service, as they call it, requires endorsing bodies to assess the credibility and potential of business and investment proposals and to oversee the successful implementation and delivery of businesses subsequently set up in the UK. Now there's a longer um, description here, it highlights that you know, millions of decisions are made each year on immigration matters, and a portion of them are on uh, business immigration matters, in particular in this category. Uh, it says the business endorsement function services the current UK unsponsored business uh, visa programs covering a number of business and investment routes. To qualify for a visa, applicants must first obtain an endorsement from an approved endorsing body. And endorsement does not guarantee a visa will be issued, but shows the visa applicant and their business has the support of a leading business organization. So that uh, provides the background. And then we know now the outcome of the tender. So let's look at the first one. Um, effectively, there's three of them, although one of them uh, is effectively a group. So we have the first, Geminus Innovation uh, Limited. Then the next, uh, Investors Limited. And then the next is uh, UK Endorsement uh, Services. So yeah, so fantastic, we know this now and uh, we're now piecing this together with what we know about the immigration rules. I told you a bit about that in my last video. Uh, where, where does this leave us? Well, we know there's going to be a greater um, scrutiny now, uh, particularly on the due diligence side, as I've described. There's going to be a greater emphasis on viability, particularly financial viability and affordability. The 50,000 requirement has been removed. You don't need to specifically have 50,000. But... For most businesses, especially tech businesses, it's going to cost more than 50000 to set it up. So the Home Office now has a greater um, discretion uh, to, uh, to make decisions about whether it's affordable. I say the Home Office, because both the endorsing bodies and the Home Office are, um, are going to be looking at this independently. And uh, that means that you're going to have to do much more work in terms of the sort of affordability analysis in the business plan 
and in, in any interview that you have with the Home Office. Um, remember that in one of the most recent periods, uh, there was a 44% refusal rate, so roughly half of people were refused even after uh, being endorsed. So I imagine that the Home Office is gonna continue looking at these matters and scrutinizing them independently. Now remember, if you are looking at this, there is also an, an additional visa route that you need to take into account. That's the Global Talent Visa. Uh, some of my clients have initially been considering the Innovator Visa, ended up applying for Global Talent and uh, uh, got endorsed by Tech Nation. So that, is, that remains a route. And there's a strong overlap if you're a, a tech entrepreneur um, or you have tech entrepreneurial ideas between the uh, Global Talent Visa and the uh, new Innovator Founder Visa. So make sure you, you consider um, both before committing to a route. 